Samuel, glad to have you speaking to us. Now, you can imagine um, our um, almost surprise when we saw the numbers. Uh, the last time we spoke to the CEO, James Moyer, he mentioned uh, that everything was well in line even as you dipped your hand in different sectors in Kenya. What exactly did we not see coming? Uh, I think you have to look at the performance in uh, two, two contexts. One is the operating environment that was there during the year. Uh, and to Centum is invested in, four, in, in, in many diverse sectors of the economy. Uh, if you unbundle that 21% uh, decrease into various sectors, you will see the performance in um, the sectors we'd call trading sectors uh, is actually quite, quite positive. Uh, that said, we, we, we had a very challenging uh, po uh, operating environment. Uh, politically, we've had a very prolonged political uncertainty. Uh, the credit growth to the private sector has significantly uh, slowed down over the last one year, uh, not least because of the impact of interest rate caps. Uh, and then we've seen just a slowdown in, uh, in, in, in incoming investment into the country. We being an investment company, uh, we had a rich pipeline of uh, uh, transactions um, and they were affected by that political uncertainty. But when you unbundle the numbers, I think they give a very different story on a sector by sector basis. Right, uh, let's move on now to uh, the issue on direct and operating costs uh, that uh, you've uh, alluded to. This grew significantly from 3.6 billion to about 4.2 billion. We still don't understand why you let costs rise so high when you are not generating as much cash from the operations. Where is the end game? What are you working out that we don't see from outside? Uh, I think the, the, the amount you are quoting are two, two, two components. One is the direct costs or cost of sales uh, from our FMCG business and our publishing business, and secondly, operating expenses. If you look at our FMCG business and specifically the beverage business, we've recorded a 10% increase in revenues and the cost of sales um, because of the increase in uh, volumes would trend in a in a similar way. So wh when you unbundle, you see uh, from uh, an operating, operating expenses uh, perspective, the increase is about, um, is about 27%. That largely is the development activities that we've been taking in the last uh, six months, both at the head office uh, in trying to uh, you know, conceptualize and de-risk the, the, the pipeline of projects we are working on and on our development uh, portfolio. Uh, you agree with me, on the development portfolio, we are not at the moment generating any revenues. These are assets or projects uh, that we are preparing um, from a de-risking perspective, uh, targeting to start generating revenues you know, in the, in, on a medium-term basis. So the figure you're looking at is, is, is the cost of sales of the publishing and, uh, and, and our beverage business. Uh, you, you, you also know right, from uh, a gross margin perspective, actually. Right, right, carry on from the gross margin perspective. We'd like to get that as well. Yeah, yeah, so if, if you look at what, what we call trading businesses, trading businesses would be our beverage businesses, uh, they would be our publishing businesses. Now we have a utility business at our large development uh, in Two Rivers. The gross margins have actually turned out uh, quite well, uh, a decrease from that 5% to about 32% for the beverage business. Uh, and that largely reflects the operating efficiencies. In the last one year, we've invested in a new PET line for the beverage business, um, and therefore that, that has resulted in significant savings uh, from having to buy, uh, you know, PET bottled uh, uh, product from other, other bottlers, um, and that has then seen an increase in margins. If you look at the operating efficiencies, again, they're reflected in that dec uh, decrease, or rather increase in, in, in gross operating margins. For the publishing business, uh, likewise, if you strip some one-off right sales from last year, the margins have actually increased to 54%, and a gross margin of 54% uh, for such a business is, 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 a, is a good outcome. Right, uh, perfect. Thanks for creating clarity on that. Uh, let's now move on to something that you also mentioned, uh, that is the interest rate capping uh, affected subsidiary. We're, we're imagining that's uh, CDN Bank. But uh, you had projected uh, within the last uh, half year and quarter on quarter, you had fantastic projections of what 
exactly you anticipate as you anticipated from the bank given the interest rate cap um, were you not able to hedge or work out so a solution to work out a, part a particular deficit uh, I think this is not specific to CDN Bank. Uh, we've seen it across the entire industry uh, with even the larger banks. Some of the larger banks announcing uh, profit warnings. Uh, so it's, it's across industry ratio. Uh, and you, you, you appreciate the challenge that the interest rate caps bring is you, you at the moment you can't price risk. CDN Bank is um, from, from its legacy. It's a, it's a micro lender and therefore it's a very different risk profile uh, from uh, if, if you look at its loan book. Um, hedging, no, at the moment definitely you can't hedge and the moment you price your, the loan book to the 14% uh, markets at the moment, it's definitely bound to affect the turnover of the revenues of, the, of, of, of such a bank. Uh, uh, having said that, uh, I right, think the okay. other way to look is how, how is the bank how is the bank responding strategically? Right, uh, still on the uh, same point with yes. CDN Bank. Yeah. Still on the same point with CDN Bank. Uh, as we are anticipating at least you maintain the cost efficiency. So please uh, just uh, guide us through that because you were about to mention that uh, over the next half year we'd, in, we'd like to know where exactly uh, the, this will go. Right. I, I would say not even maintain the cost efficiency. In fact, improve it. If you look at the numbers we released uh, earlier today, there is a significant improvement uh, on the cost base. Costs have decreased by 27%, which speaks to the cost uh, rationalization initiatives that the bank has put in place. Uh, equally, if you look at the cost of funds, uh, the cost of deposits, there's a significant decrease if you compare with uh, a previous, the, 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 period, uh, the previous period. Uh, that again speaks to the initiatives the bank has put in place to mobilize uh, current account and a uh, current account and savings account deposits and move away from the more expensive fixed deposits. Uh, so yes, the total interest income is low, uh, is much lower than last year, but equally the interest expense and operating expenses are significantly down. Um, and that in a way speaks to the other question you're asking in terms of the outlook for the bank. Uh, the, the, the cost rationalization program improving inefficiencies, uh, we expect them to continue um, uh, being seen. Uh, the deposit mobilization to move away from the more expensive deposits, again, that's a trend you expect to see looking forward. But also importantly, uh, recently um, we announced a change of management. We now have a new uh, CEO, quite experienced uh, in this market, and the bank now is strategically focusing on growing its non-funded uh, income. Post September, we've seen some uh, very good traction uh, around around that strategic focus. Uh, the the non-funded income uh, in terms of fees and forex income is now uh, picking up post September. Right. Uh, let's move on to another conversation now. Um, the last time we spoke heavily again, uh, we were engaging in diversification of the business model, and we had Akira Power, uh, Two Rivers and a coal-fired plant in the coast, uh, just as some examples that were entirely capital extensive. How stretched out are you right. now, knowing that you've not reached full potential of these projects, to continue uh, refinancing? Uh, I think you have to look at it in the context of our, our business model. Uh, the way we do our business, we conceptualize a project, uh, we then de-risk it, and post-de-risking, we bring in uh, that party investors. Uh, whether debt or equity. Uh, and that model has been uh, successfully applied, for example, at Two Rivers, uh, where you will recall we've been able to raise over the last three years uh, some, 14, some $140 million. On the power projects that you mentioned, the, the model is largely the same. Uh, we've been in a period of de-risking, and I would say the projects are now significantly uh, de-risked uh, the necessary, you know, uh, we've achieved some very key milestones in the development process. Uh, PPAs uh, negotiated and signed, operations and maintenance contracts, EPC contracts signed, and recently and very importantly, uh, the letter of support from the government was issued for both projects in August. That's a very significant milestone. Uh, post the risking, uh, and specifically with the letter of support, we then expect uh, uh, to accelerate quickly to uh, the financial close, and that financial close is when then the project would be fully funded. 
Right, let, let's not talk about your deficits. Uh, um, the last time, we uh, let's just, uh, we'll track it back to uh, last year, around March. Um, a center mentioned that they were increasing its borrowing uh, by up to 35% with the keen interest on retiring the short-term dollar-denominated debt. What's the update on this? Right. Where are we so far now that we're in November 2017? Uh, so a key development in this year has been the redemption of our 4.2 billion bond. Uh, which was, I'm um, happy to say, financed from our cash reserves uh, on our balance sheet and the operating cash flows that we've generated over the last six months. So if you look at our debt position now, uh, right now, we've actually deleveraged by about uh, 20 billion, uh, I mean, by about, yeah, two, about 2 billion uh, Kenya shillings, 20 million US dollars. So our overall gearing at the moment is uh, down from 27% to about 25%. Um, I hear you when you said, uh, when you talk about what we announced last year, but when we did the release for 31st March uh, 2017 reserves, we talked about our desire to deleverage our balance sheet, and that's exactly what has happened with the redemption of the 4.2 billion uh, Kenya shilling bond. So our debt at the moment is now uh, one bond, the 6 billion bond that we issued in 2015, and a 50 million facility that we have with Rand Merchant Bank, but representing and a net deleverage on our balance sheet. Right, well noted. Uh, now, moving on to your regional pa uh, participation, we understand the mandate that Centum has in Kenya, but uh, are we still seeing uh, the same priorities across the region? We had uh, uh, financial services, fast-moving consumer goods, energy, and real estate. Are these still the four that we're focusing on as we move across the border? Well, uh, in our current strategy, we actually focus uh, across eight sectors, um, real estate, FMCG, financial services, power, agribusiness, education, healthcare, and ICT. Uh, and in each of those sectors, other than ICT, we do have uh, projects which are, which are running. So fundamentally, the, the, the focus has not, uh, has not changed. We still remain focused on, uh, on those eight sectors. Uh, I suppose when you look at our financial statements now, uh, and any reports that we issue, you will notice we uh, classify now the business into four uh, segments. There's what you call the growth segment. These are uh, trading companies, uh, EBITDA positive, uh, you know, uh, dividend paying companies. We have the development projects on the other extreme end. These are very early stage greenfield projects. Then we have real estate and marketable securities. Uh, so within the growth portfolio, the focus really hasn't changed from the sectors that we have always communicated to the market as, as our primary focus. Uh, geographically, again, uh, we haven't changed. I mean, we remain uh, very much looking uh, at Kenya and the opportunities uh, within East Africa. Um, and from a marketable securities portfolio, we remain focused on a breadth of opportunities across Africa. Right. Uh, finally, I have to talk about shareholders and those who have uh, within the public that have a hand in Centum. Uh, shares last time, uh, when it created a buzz with the dividends that you're paying out, you mentioned that shares had not been transferred, but what was transferred was unclaimed dividends paid out pre-2010. What is the situation now with giving back to, uh, in terms of dividends? Uh, so, I mean, you're right. Uh, when we launched this new strategic period, uh, 2014 to 2019, our communication to the market in terms of policy was a nil dividend policy to 2019. Uh, last year, the board reviewed that. Um, one, given the market performance of uh, all shares in general and our share uh, in particular, we just thought it would be good to give a return to shareholders. One, because of the market performance, but also because the company had, uh, over the last uh, three years since 2014, uh, done remarkably well from a cash return perspective. Uh, so the board decided to review the policy and uh, declare a dividend of one shilling per share last year. In the current year, we are still quite uh, comfortable with um, you know, the overall cash return um, generated to date and the outlook. And the board again announced a 20% increase from what was paid last year. Uh, the announcement by the board is that we expect at a minimum uh, to maintain that kind uh, or that level of, of, of dividend payout. Uh, you talked about some uh, unclaimed assets. Um, we, we, we have really gone to the market um, uh, and, and you know, publicized and tried to reach out to any would-be uh, dormant, dormant uh, shareholders. There is a very, I would say, there is a very nominal transfer of any unclaimed assets to the authorities. It's very nominal relative to the 
entire package. We do have quite an active uh, shareholder base. Right, absolutely perfect. Thank you very much for creating time uh, to help us understand the context of these numbers. Samuel Karaoke, uh, Group Finance Director at Center 